In this video with the Ong King, I'm going to go over the timeline for medical school and how you should prepare for residency applications in each phase of medical school. If you need help with this, here's a link. We also have a Patreon. We have a whole team that is ready to support you through whatever questions you have through this whole process. I know it is confusing. Uh, we'd also appreciate if you follow us on social media and on YouTube here. We have lots of videos coming down the road. Some important notes as we go into this is that I am a U.S. medical student. So my experience is based off being U.S. I know that, um, you know, IMGs or U.S. IMGs even are going to have a little bit different. Uh, so just keep that in mind as you're listening to this video. Another thing is that different schools have different amount of preclinical time. I had two years of preclinical time. A lot of schools seem to be moving towards one or one and a half years. So that affects things. But the timeline still is going to be roughly the same because once you get into the clinical years, you're very busy. And, and, and so the same principles will apply. Another thing is that I applied to a competitive specialty. So it was important for me to decide early on which, uh, you know, all, all of these things. And I've highlighted these throughout these slides in red if it has to uh, do with you going into a competitive specialty. Now, another thing is there's lots of other videos on my YouTube channel. And I've highlighted those all in blue. Uh, some of those videos will not be out yet. They're part of this playlist that I have planned. Uh, others of them are related to videos I've already made. And I will link everything in the description of this video as best as possible. Uh, and all of these videos specifically are in the playlist as well. I also did dermatology, so just keep that in mind um, because different specialties are a little bit different. Now, before medical school, people are always asking me, you know, how much should I study? And, uh, you know, that's a pretty common question I see online. One thing I would recommend is take an anatomy class before medical school. I felt like that was very helpful for me. I didn't take it before the MCAT. It's not needed to get in my last semester. And I think it was really nice because you definitely power through anatomy as a medical student. And it's nice to not have to worry about that as you're trying to learn all this other new content. Um, people ask, you know, should I get a head start on studying? And I would just say no. Medical school is busy, and a lot of times you just need to do it in med school. I would truly enjoy your summer before you start. Go travel, go do something, because your time is about to become significantly less. Um, so go spend time with your friends and family and travel the world and, and get some experiences that you won't be able to have down the road. Now, some people do ask me about research, and this is a video that uh, I plan to have in this playlist. And I would say if you know if you have the opportunity and you love research, that's something you're interested in, getting involved in it before medical school is going to give you a huge leg up. There were some of my peers that did that, and it made a big difference. Uh, your research that you publish as an undergrad will still go on your residency application. Uh, so if you're finishing up projects, you know, I did my undergraduate in neuroscience. Those, those papers still, and even posters, still went on my residency application to dermatology. So that is useful, and I, I would recommend that if that's something you're interested in. Uh, but otherwise, don't kill yourself. Uh, it's, you, know, you don't need to be that crazy yet. Your opportunities do get quite a bit more as you become a medical student. So the first year of medical school, what are you going to do? The first and, and highest priority is figure out your study strategy. This is a very different time in your life. You can't do the undergrad thing like you used to. Uh, I promise, it's just not going to work. Uh, obviously, I recommend Anki. I have a whole YouTube channel on it. Um, and, and I think it works really well. And that's because you're memorizing a lot of things. But during your first year, your number one priority is going to be figuring out what is my study strategy going to be and how am I going to learn all this material. The next thing is figure out your specialty. I highlighted this in red because if you're thinking about a competitive specialty, you will have a huge leg up on everybody if you have decided in your first year what you want to do. So for me, I went and shadowed a ton of doctors and did in different specialties and ultimately decided, you know what, I want to pursue dermatology. It's okay if I decide to change, but I, you know, I want to just do that from the beginning. And it helped. Um, same thing with like orthopedics and these more competitive specialties. And I'm talking about like the really, really competitive ones. But shadowing in general, I would recommend for everybody. I think it's helpful, gets you interested, helps you to learn different specialties. Uh, and also studying gets kind of boring sometimes every day. And it's nice to remind yourself why you're here in medical school and why you want to do this. Um, start research. So again, in blue, because there's going to be a video on this, but also in red, because this is important if you want to do competitive things. If you're interested in family practice and pediatrics, this is really not that important to start during your first year, uh, unless you love research and want to do it. But if you're interested in a competitive specialty, you absolutely should start during your first year. And the reason is because it takes a long time to actually get a project approved, then do all of the work, and then submit it and then have it get rejected, and then resubmit it and get rejected again, and then resubmit it to get it published. And you want those published by the time that you are 
applying to residency and you're not going to have time to work on these projects during your clinical year. Uh, so I recommend just start as early as you possibly can. Um, extracurriculars are really important as well. So this means that, you know, get free clinics, clubs, whatever it may be, find things that you truly enjoy and do it. I, I loved volunteering at our free clinics at my med school during my first year, and you have a lot more free time. I know it feels like you might not have a lot of free time, but uh, you do. So that's what I would recommend. And then meet with your mentors. And the reason I recommend this is because they will help guide you uh, on everything. You know, but if you have a good mentor, they will guide you in who in the department or maybe them you can do research with. They'll guide you on what sorts of extracurriculars are going to be good things for you to get involved in to better meet the department. If you've already decided on a specialty, uh, they'll connect you with people for shadowing opportunities. Like This is really important. I would probably meet with your mentors every six months if possible. Uh, and then uh, have fun. You know, Like I said, this is almost the easiest year of medical school. You have more free time and you're a medical student, so you have access to a huge amount of resources that you didn't otherwise have. Uh, so those are my recommendations for first year. I am making a video on specialty choice soon as well. So um, hopefully there'll be a lot of other uh, things that are re related to this. Okay, now summer between your first and second year. This is also a very important time. And the key thing I would recommend here is research. Research, research, research. You have free time and you have the connections now that you're a med student. I would get involved in everything that you possibly can and use this as a time to really do the workhorse part of your project, meaning all of the data collection, all of the uh, you know statistics, and then even writing up most of the paper and doing the background research, so it's basically ready. And then second year, as you get busy, you can kind of just put the, the finishing touches on it and, and get it submitted so that it's uh, accepted and published by the time you apply to residency. Another thing is shadowing. This is a great time when you have lots of free time. Uh, just go shadow, figure out what specialty you want to do, and again, just remind yourself why you're here. Uh, during my summer, I did global health, and I actually did a research project in Ghana. And I loved it, and it turned out to be a, a great experience that I was able to talk about quite a few times during my residency application. And it's and honestly, it's something that I hope to consider like and keep doing throughout my life. So find something you love and do that during this summer. Okay, second year. This is um, probably the most grueling year of medical school, uh, just because you are constantly head in the books studying. And there's step one, studying and practice questions. I have a video on how to study for step one, how I scored over 260 on there. And I know step one is pass fail now, but I still highly recommend all of the principles I taught in that video because everything in step one is going to be your foundation for your shelf exams and step two, which are very, very important. Uh, and there's a, uh, another video that will be in this playlist on grades and their importance. Uh, and those are ones that I think are very, very important. Practice questions are going to be key throughout your entire second year. I started practice questions for the first time as a second year and just did like 20 or 30 a day throughout the entire year. It was a great way to really synthesize everything that I was learning. Continued research. I kind of mentioned this just barely. Uh, you want to do the workhorse part during the first year in the, in, the, in the summer and then put the finishing touches on it and polish it so that you can hopefully submit it sometime during this year. And then extracurriculars, uh, you know, you want to do all of the things that you were doing and uh, and more. If you have time, just continue that long-term commitment to whatever it is you've already started. I should go back to the research one, um, actually, because one thing you want to try and do is submit to conferences. Get your posters in and your abstracts. So you'll have time during this second year where you can actually travel to these conferences. And that's a great place to network with people. Uh, it's also, you know, the posters, every single poster you have, you can put on your residency application. Okay, meeting with your mentors. Like I said before, meet with your mentors every six months. I still recommend and definitely do that throughout this whole year. And meet with academic mentors if possible to evaluate your performance and how you can do better and prepare for your third year. Or uh, for some of you, it will be your second, second year or two and a half years. So the, this year, you're basically in your clerkships. The, you know, I say third year, but what I mean is your clinical year when you're in the hospital. And your number one priority is to honor your rotations. I have it, uh, this is in blue and it's not for a video. I have an entire playlist on how to honor every single rotation that I was on. And I would highly recommend this. I, I put in some really good things that I learned throughout that year. That's your number one priority. A lot of people ask, what's the order of rotation? Should I do medicine before surgery or surgery before medicine? And the truth is, it doesn't matter. Uh, if you have medicine, I thought having medicine before surgery would be really important. I ended up having surgery first and, and medicine almost last. And surgery was hard to have first, but medicine almost last was nice because then I was basically ready to take step two. 
The only thing I would recommend here is that with your electives, which is my next one, you should put the elective where, you know, your specialty of choice near the end of third year so that you're well practiced, you have a better uh, clinical knowledge base at this point, you're better at giving presentations, so you look better. And that way, when you're on those electives towards the end of your third year, you can ask for letters of recommendation. Um, and I'm going to make a whole video on this. But you want to make it so that at the end of your third year or somewhat close to that, you you look really good. You're on the elective and the specialty you want to be. You get your letters of recommendation and you make that uh, network with all the people in the department so that they know you. Another thing I recommend kind of at the end of this year is take step two. I know some people take step one and step two after the clinical year, and that's uh, you know, school dependent, but I would take step two as soon as you can after third year because it basically builds right off of all of the, um, all, all of the shelf exams that you've taken and all of that builds off of step one. So it all kind of comes together and, and getting this out of the way quickly is going to be nice. And then meet with your mentors. Like I keep saying, every six months, it's going to be really important to evaluate your performance and, and know what direction you need to do and if there's ways that you need to strengthen your application. As you get to your fourth year, Meeting with your mentors is going to be uh, more than every six months. Now you you really need to get things together. You need to get letters of recommendation. You need to do away rotations, everything. And so this is going to be a really important part. And away rotations, this typically happens, I want to say early spring, so like March or April, is when you're going to be applying to away rotations. And then you'll probably be doing them late into the summer. Mine was in August. And some people will do August, September, October, maybe even a little bit later. Uh, it's up to you on how many you want to do. Uh, I put the S in red here because if you're doing a competitive specialty, this is going to be very important to get you that leg in the door uh, and, and, you know, just kind of meet the department. A lot of times away rotations can get you an interview. And so that's kind of a handy part for this. The next thing is preparing your CV, your heiress application, and everything else. And uh, as you can see, I'm making separate videos on all of these topics. Uh, one thing I would recommend during this fourth year, just as a side note, is getting a professional headshot photo for all of these because you're going to be sending a lot of papers uh, to people writing your letters and everything else. So um, anyway, that, that's what I would recommend. And then you're going to submit um, heiress. So your away rotations you're going to be applying to early in the spring. Uh, like March, April, probably, you're going to be preparing your CV and your ARIS application throughout the entire summer. And you're going to submit ARIS sometime in September, October. The dates have been shifting recently because of COVID, but tends to be in October and, uh, well, September, October. And then you're going to be interviewing throughout your fourth year. You're going to have time off so that you can go to interviews. Um, it, it's fun. It's stressful. But it's just a different uh, experience. It's nice to be in this next phase of life. And the interviews typically happen from right after Eris is submitted all the way into February. And different specialties do it at different times. Seems like family practice and pediatrics interview very early. Uh, orthopedics and dermatology tend to interview quite late, uh, well into January and February. Uh, and that's going to be specialties dependent. So you just ask around and, and ask your mentors what, what the plan is for that so that you can plan your rotations around those things. And then uh, you're going to submit your rank list. That's going to be in February. And then uh, you'll you'll match. Um, and so you basically get time off and your your match day is usually in March. So you'll you'll have your interviews up to February. And then at some point in February, you'll submit your rank list. You'll match in March uh, and then graduate uh, usually April and May. And you'll, in between all that, you just have these electives. You have time off, whatever it may be. Take electives to get you ready for your intern year, um, but also to have fun and just learn medicine. You're no longer being graded and have to worry about that. So it's kind of nice. Um, and then the very end, you uh, you match. And that's kind of, and then, and then you're off to residency. So that's, that's my timeline, right from the beginning of medical school up until you match and graduate and what things are important as you go through each of those steps. Thanks for learning with the On King. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel here as well as follow us on Facebook, Instagram, or Patreon. That is at On King Med. Also feel free to reach out via email or check out our website, onkingmed.com for more tips and tricks.